Hello, survivors. I'm the survivalist, and welcome to Impossible Creatures. Just take a moment to appreciate the nice little menu music. Now, this is a fairly old real-time strategy game, and I'm sure it's probably heard a little bit about, but you basically create your own units, or your fighting units, by mixing together various animals and creatures. I am probably just going to play the campaign with it to kind of show it off. I've never actually completed the campaign, so that's a little chance to go into that. We'll go into mod selection just to show what I'm playing with. So, I'm Possible Creatures is on Steam, and it actually has workshop support. So I'm using IC, I think that's just Impossible Creatures, Insect Invasion, which was their little expansion towards it, and Tellurian. So that's just everything I have currently for basically for my impossible creatures, so all I want to do is show it off and just have a little fun with it. I'm still trying to figure out what series and what games I want to do next, so I figured this would just be a little random toss and that should really hit things off. So we'll just go into campaign and just do the impossible creatures one. Yeah, we'll play the tutorial out, that way we can kind of show it off, you guys get a feel for what the game's like, and just get a little taste of what the golden age, I guess, of RTS's really were. Welcome to the tutorial for Impossible Creatures, a game which takes solid RTS gameplay set in an imaginative and vibrant world and allows you to design your own units so that you can play the game on your terms using your strategies. When you're ready, click on the continue button in order to proceed. Okay. On the bottom part of your screen is the taskbar. It displays information about the units that you have selected, as well as the island that you're battling on. In the center of the taskbar is the minimap. Okay, so I didn't even realize this was the kind of tutorial you get, so we'll just play through and that way sh the narrator can save me a little bit of talking. I'm sure if you've watched my videos enough, I'm not always the most talkative, but I still try to have my input there. The minimap provides you with a high-level view of the island that you are on. It indicates which areas you have yet to explore by shading those areas in grey. As you progress through the game, you will be asked to do a variety of objectives. When given a new objective, the Objectives button will flash. Oh, so you can see it right down there, the little flashing bottom right. Press the flashing button on the right-hand side of your taskbar now to bring up the objective screen. Learn how to play Apostle Creatures. Incomplete. Will that ever be complete, though? <laughs> now let's get started. Okay. So this is going to go really into the basics of everything. Now I will teach you how to control the camera. We'll begin by panning the camera. To pan the camera in any direction, move the mouse cursor to the edge of the screen in the direction that you wish to pan. Try panning the camera now. Well done! You can keep on panning the camera now until you feel comfortable with panning. Then click on the continue button when you're ready to proceed. Uh, the reason I think I'm going to go through the full tutorial in the video is just to give some nostalgia a bit, because I don't actually know how many modern RTSs are getting released, like, I know I've played quite a few, Age of Mythology, and Ix Expansion, Impossible Creatures, oddly enough I never did play StarCraft, I think it's one I wanted to, but I never did, Star Wars Battlegrounds, was it? There's an RTS for the Star Wars that was actually not too bad. You can also zoom in and out by rolling your mouse oh, wheel yeah, forwards and backwards. That. Or by pressing... Excellent. Continue zooming I'll in and out. just kind of go through You can this also quick. rotate your view. Oh. To rotate the camera, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and move the mouse oh, left Oh, this was right. another nice feature Good is that job. you had some... Keep on rotating the camera until you're comfortable with camera rotation. Is that we Once could actually go right rotating, down in at ground level button. to see and explore a bit. To quickly return to the default view at any time, press the default cam and that's all there is to camera control. There we go. So not too bad at all. We'll just keep on cruising through this. Unit selection control. This is where you'll get to see a little bit of how... I will now teach you how to select and control okay. your so units. Okay, so maybe it's not what I thought it was exactly. To issue an order to a unit under your control, first you need to select them. Select a unit by placing your mouse cursor over them and pressing the left mouse button. Now select the henchman. Yeah, that's basically what they now, are. Now you can Just order henchmen. him to move by right-clicking on the ground. Move the henchman out to the exit of the jungle by pressing the right mouse button on the ground where you want him to move to. You're the boss. <laughs> Excellent. You can also click on the ground that is darkened out in order to move units a long way. Continue to move the henchman back to the village. You will notice a blip on your mini-map. This shows you where the village is located. Oh, this just brings back so many tutorial nostalgias of these games. Age of Empires, Age of Mythology, 
I think one was called Rise of Legends was another one we tried to playing. To select multiple units at a time, you can drag select them. To drag, select both of the henchmen at the villa. Well done. You Ready, okay, boss. so I'm hoping this will only take another minute or two. If you guys want to skip ahead, I'll leave a little timestamp in the description about... Uh, sorry, just one good Now I will teach you about resource gathering. This is the lab. The lab is a very important structure. Without it, you're unable to create henchmen which build structures for you. In Impossible Creatures, everything that you build costs a certain amount of resources. The types of resources available are coal and electricity. The amount of coal and electricity you currently have is displayed in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Coal is displayed in blue and electricity is displayed in orange. The number displayed in green tells you the maximum number of units that you can have in the world at one time and is called the population cap. To begin collecting resources, you select the lab now. You will now see a Create Henchman button on the lower right-hand side of the taskbar. Go ahead and build two henchmen now by clicking on the Create Henchman button twice. Okay, so I can't imagine it's going to be too much longer before we'll be out of this, but we'll just keep going through. So what were your guys' favorite RTSs, or if you ever played any of them? I, I know I said Golden Age, I think was probably between say 95 to 2005 i'd probably say good range for when we saw some of the really popular and a lot of diverse of real-time strategy games out like this now that you have some henchmen you can yeah, this is coal this you used your henchmen to collect coal by issuing them a gather Standard order resource collect collection. 100 coal now by selecting the henchmen then right clicking on the coal pile i want to see can we make more no nope. we can't make any more so we'll just Ready, have to boys. wait Yes. Something interesting is instead of just the standard 10 you usually got, these guys' as base give you 20, boss. so the resources were a little different in this game than any of the other RTSs as I come to think about it. And it was 100 for another henchman, okay. The other type of resource is electricity. Electricity is gathered by building lightning rods and electrical generators. To begin building a lightning rod, first select a Now click on the build button that's flashing in the bottom right hand corner of the taskbar. Okay. You will now see a list of structures that you can build. Oh, I can build right this lightning now, rod. All you can build, click on the lightning rod button. You now place the structure by moving your mouse. Go ahead and place the lightning rod shadow somewhere on the terrain by left clicking on the ground when the shadow. The more henchmen you have building a structure, the faster it will build. If you want to build things faster, select another we'll do henchman. Just that. And then right click on the lightning rod that is currently being constructed. As you can see, Impossible Creatures was set, I think, 50s to 60-ish. Like, the 1950s to 1970 would probably be a now good range of the time rod, for it. automatically collect more electricity. The other way of collecting electricity is by... This is a geyser. You build an electrical generator in the same way that you build a lightning rod. Select a henchman. Does it going to give... Oh, now click yeah. on the build. Now click on the electrical... Now place yeah, the electrical like generator in the world. The only place that you can build electrical generators is on top of geysers. And yeah, we'll just wait till that's put together. But you can see it's really... Actually, I'm not even sure when the time period is set for the campaign or the tech level is. But you can see it's this kind of steampunk, old-fashioned style that really kind of gives you the mad science feel for that's it. That's all there is to know about collecting resources. Okay, so let's see what they have next, if anything. Structure building and control. Structures allow you to do many things such as build creatures and research technology. I will now teach you how to build structures and access some of their more advanced features. Structures are built in the same way that you build a lightning rod and an electrical generator. To begin, we will build a creature chamber. That's basically your main barracks that you're Select going to get. Henchman majority of your now units click on from. The build button. Now click on the creature chamber. Now place the structure in the world by moving the shadow of the creature chamber is the structure that allows you to build creatures that you have created a genetic blueprint for in the army builder. Yeah, you basically exactly what they said. This game's main sticking point was your units were exactly how you wanted to make them. You would take two creatures, mix legs, arms, bodies, heads, choose what you wanted and it was your abomination army now let's do some research to research select the structure that you wish to research from which in this case is you can see in the right hand side of the taskbar all of the different research options available at this structure 
The four buttons displayed indicate higher creature research levels. The buttons that are grayed out cannot be researched yet, but will be available later, once you have advanced to a higher level. Research level two creatures now by clicking on the first button in and the And just like any RTS, you sort of have ages and stages that Many your civilization or your faction will go through. In order to see what you need to build before you can begin researching an item that is unavailable, hold your mouse cursor over the button for a second or two. Help text will be displayed, which will inform you of what needs to be built in order to gain access to the research item. Uh, what the heck? We'll Hello. put you guys to get coal while waiting on that. Yeah, just give this a little minute to run through. There now we go. let's combine some creatures. Here we go. This is where we're going to get into the real thick of the game. Army builder and combiner. This is where you could have a lot of fun before even actually just game, playing the strategy part. You'll be able to create part. genetic blueprints by entering the army builder. To enter the army builder, click on the army management button located in the top right hand side of the taskbar. Click on it now and follow the instructions to create a few genetic blueprints for your army. Creating genetic blueprints and then using them for battle is what Impossible Creatures is all about. The Army Builder and Creature Combiner is where you create these genetic blueprints and add them to your army. You are then able to build these creatures in the game from the creature chamber. This is our kind narrator said. That's the entire premise of every battle, every map, everything you're doing. Is It's your... Freaks of nature put up against someone else's freaks of nature. This is the army builder. The army builder shows you all of the genetic blueprints that you currently have in your army. In order to create a genetic blueprint and add it to your army, you must first combine two stock animals together. Click on an empty slot in your army list, and then click on the combiner button that is flashing now. This is the creature combiner screen. This screen allows you to mix two stock animals together to create a genetic blueprint. First of all, you need to select the stock that you wish to combine. Click on the Select Animal button on the left-hand side of the screen. And now you let your mad scientist flow. Here is a list With of all options. the stock animal types that you have available <laughs> to you. In the single-player game, you will have to collect the genetic samples from animals yourself. In multiplayer, you will have access to all of the stock animals whether you have collected them or not. There are dozens of different animals mm -hmm. to choose from. But for now, let's just work with a few to keep things simple. Select one of the animals now by left-clicking on it once. You can see all of the attributes for the animal that you've selected down in the lower half of the screen. If you wish to find out more details about what a certain number or icon represents, you can access the help text by hovering your mouse over a part of the screen for a second or two. Why don't you spend some time reading through the text displayed on this page and familiarize yourself with the information. Once you're done, select one of the animals and click on the accept button. So this is where you were merging, this is the meat and potatoes of core of the entire game is merging creatures. Like you can see just the baboon on its own, you can see how much melee it's damaged and actually where it's broken up from. So three of the damage hit points come from its four limbs and four of it comes from its head with the bite. You have ability as a pack hunter, bonuses one year of the same species, and you go health, defense. It's a little bit of a math game if you want to get your numbers for the most value, or if you just want to have a bit of fun. So we'll choose the baboon on the left. Great, now all we need is one more creature and we're ready to start mixing limbs up. To choose a second animal, click on the select animal button over on the right hand side of the screen. Good. Now pick another animal in the list and press accept again to make that animal the second piece of the puzzle. And be born our abomination. <laughs> in the middle of the screen, you can now see the result of your selections, and quite a magnificent beast it is, too. Do remember this is 2000-ish release, I believe, so the models and the quality are not the highest, but it's still not too bad considering. On the left and right hand sides of the creature are a collection of buttons that represent the individual limbs of your combined creature. These buttons allow you to select which limbs you want to incorporate into your combination. Click on the limb buttons now and experiment with different limb configurations. And this is where you kind of choose your paint for what you want. You could either... In oh. the bottom half of the screen are the various attributes of the combined creature. Changing which limbs are assigned to the creature will change the value of these attributes and abilities that the creature has. 
Once you have your creature combined to your design, you can take a picture of it. The picture that you take will then be used throughout the game as a representation of your creature. To take a picture of your creature, press the camera button in the middle of the screen. Once you have combined all of the limbs to your liking, you need to save the creature. To save the creature, press the Save button. By saving the genetic blueprint you have just created, you will be adding that blueprint to your zoo. When you save the creature, you will be prompted to give it a name. Try to make it something memorable, as you will tend to have <laughs> many different creatures combined after playing the game for a That's while. That's an understatement. <laughs> save the creature when you are ready, and I will meet you back at the Army Builder screen. Okay, so now that the Kai Narrator is finished up, this is where you can kind of see. So, say we have Pack Hunter is just something that is from the baboon itself, but the cheetah has a leap attack. But we don't have it right now because we have the baboon's hind leg, so we can swap that out and we've gained that. And now, if we look over here, it looks like the baboon actually will have a higher damage bite than the hyena, or hyena, than the cheetah, which is a little odd. But we can even swap out the front like that, because we have the same damage for the pummel and the claws. And if we change other things... Like if we swap out... You can kind of see how things change. Like if you want to use the other pummel, you'll get a little bit more defense, health, and a little bit of reduction for the cost of coal. But at the cost of some speed. So you can mix around all you want and really make some strange looking things. Like the tail doesn't really do anything. The body definitely changes quite a bit. And you'll kind of get a back and forth of what part you've just swapped out so you can kind of see what's going on there. So I think 120 for the... We're going to call this... Baby's first blasphemy. I think we're going to try to give a lot of our creatures some interesting, fun names. So we'll save that. Excellent. You now have the beginnings of an army. As you can see, your newly created genetic blueprint is listed in your army. You can also add genetic blueprints to your army by selecting them from the zoo. The zoo contains a copy of all the creatures you've created so far, but don't currently have in your army. Now you know how to build an army. Now you will be able to build these creatures from the creature chamber when you're in the world. Click on the back button down in the left-hand corner of the screen to leave the army builder. Okay, so that's another little section of the tutorial done. So now it's just going to give us a little insight into... The creature oh. chamber is where you build all of your creatures. You built a creature chamber earlier in the tutorial, and you're looking at it now. I am. <laughs> to build a creature, first select the creature chamber. This is all pretty straightforward, so I'll see if I can you kind of skip through this You will see a list of buttons representing all of your creatures in the bottom right-hand corner of the taskbar. To build a creature, click on the icon that represents that creature. All creatures cost a certain amount of resources, depending on how powerful they are. If you run out of resources, just tell your henchman to go and collect some more. Go ahead and build five creatures now by clicking on the creature icons five okay, times. Okay, so let's set our blasphemies to go down there. One, two, three, four, five, like that. And we'll let them come out and we'll take a look at them. There's our first one. So as you can see, the game does have a lot of personal customization and a lot of systems you can really experiment with towards what creatures you'll make. As we get into the camp... Select the creatures that you've just built and move them to the village. Thank you, Miss Narrator. I'll speak now. Thank you. So, there's a lot of personal customization you can put in, and once we get into the campaign, you'll get to see a little bit more about just how you can really kind of twist and warp things to your liking. Oh, and already we have a few... Now that you can see the enemy creatures, you can attack them. To attack enemy units, select the creatures that you wish to attack, and then right-click on the target. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of creatures. I think there's at least 50 different creatures you can pick and choose and mix and match Go however you want. Go ahead and attack the enemies with your creatures now. By selecting your creatures, then right-clicking on the enemy creatures. Like that one there is a cobra and lobster mix. And I think these are coyote and something. Well done. 
triggered abilities are special attacks that some of your creatures are capable of doing. Oh, we got this creature is part gorilla and part electric. Eel. Okay, there we the go. Eel tail gives it a special There's a new abomination for us. Electrical burst that creates a burst of electricity that damages everything surrounding it, including your own creatures. We will now make this creature use his triggered ability. Go ahead and select the creature. Now click on the electrical burst button that's flashing. Then target the ground in front of him by left clicking on it. Okay, so this is the electrocilla. And we'll just follow that. Whenever the creature uses a triggered ability, he uses up some of his endurance. The blue bar below the creature represents its endurance. A creature's endurance will slowly regenerate with time. Only when the creature has enough endurance will it be able to use its triggered ability again. For now, I will set the creature's endurance to full so you can use it again shortly. Now that you know how to use the triggered ability, use it to kill the enemy creatures over there. So it looks like a poison piranha, so... I think it's part piranha, part poison frog. Let's... Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Piranha head and tail onto a poison arrow frog. So as you can see, there's a lot of different combinations that you'll really be able to mess around with and have some fun on. Well done. This is just one of the triggered abilities. Some other abilities, such as Frenzy, are triggered by simply pressing on the button. So let's see if there's anything left to the tutorial. Oh, just the end, I believe. I've managed to find the location of the base that sent those animals to attack us earlier. I think you mean sent the animals to have a playful time frolicking while we murdered them. I've also managed to come by some more genetic samples for you, so don't hesitate to go back into the army builder and combine a few to create some more genetic blueprints for your army. You can quit now, or you can continue on to test your strategic skills against the enemy. Okay, maybe what we'll do is we'll go into our little army manager, and we'll just make a few just to kind of round this out. So as you can see, they gave us one, two, three, four, six different ones to experiment with. So you can combine a bunch of different things together, like a chimpanzee and a giraffe. You get somebody who does not look like it's having a good time. We could even get some ranged with some melee attack there. Ah, maybe we, so we will get this thing. So I know exactly what we're calling this one. Miss Leg Day. That's a perfect one for it right there. Never miss Leg Day. And we will try one more. The last two we have are a Gorilla and a Rami. Let's plug them together. So they also have their own base research levels. And when put together, they'll usually be around the same. Or I think it's... They start as the lowest of the next highest kind of research skill there is. Okay, so that's the Gram. Well, I definitely want to keep the head and the front legs there. There's not really much... Ooh, actually... Yeah, so... That's changed its cost up to a 4 now. I think we'll do that. And this one is going to be... Give me a moment. There we go. So we'll see if we can make a few more of these abominations against nature. And we already have some here, so let's group everyone together and see what we'll kind of play with. So this will kind of be basically our prologue episode in towards Impossible Creatures. I'm not sure how long I'll do the series for or on with it. But I just wanted something is it's a little fun thing to work on, just kind of play around with. I'm still trying to figure out what I exactly want to do a series on next. So this is kind of going to be a space filler. I do have Pray for the Gods going on. Moonlighter, I do want to come back to, but I think I want to give it a little bit of time while we wait. And let's see. Oh, we can make some of our missed leg days. Oh, and here's our enemies here. Let our animals play nicely and beat the crap out of each other. So 
well, we'll let them have their fun there. We'll, we'll stop that from being built. And we'll just send those guys off there so that way Miss Leg Days can come in and have some fun too. So let's see, is there any... Alright, we do also want them to come at me, bro. So we'll send our little, our derpy Miss Leg Days off. And then once they have their fun, I think we'll probably end this first episode here with everything. But it is... I was really surprised when they actually did put Impossible Creatures up onto Steam, because I didn't think they would actually be implemented. As you can see, we have our ranged guys throwing a bunch of rocks. I think there's actually a way to make them go... They have an attack brown option. I thought there was also a way to make them be melee fighters, too. I know, though, for a lot of ranged attacks, I believe that they have a sort of splash effect. So, they, there is friendly fire with that in place. We'll just get all these guys together. And what the hell, send them down here as well. This doesn't exactly look like our rocks are doing much to the lab. So we'll send all of our blasphemies after it. Yeah, as you can see, our guys are taking damage from the splash-friendly fire there is. I think all ranged attacks have that, so it's something to keep in mind as you're playing around with it. Okay, they're taking a while. Let's see if we can get a few... Okay, uh, yeah, see if we can take out the henchmen. Okay, so we got a couple of come at me bros as well. So let's send them down this way. First of leg day, these guys actually move pretty fast, don't they? Okay, let's see if we can get this all wrapped up quickly. Basically, impossible creatures in a nutshell. Become a mad scientist, twist and warp them to whatever form you think will do best, and then send them to unleash havoc and chaos upon the world. It really likes to get your mad scientist going a bit, and also create your own unit army, which is something that's really unique to it. A lot of them have your own sort of... Choose a faction, then you get all those units to you. This is one that really lets you go all out in how you want to make your army and what units you want to send into combat. I thought the come at least would have been a little better than they are against the building, but I guess we just don't have enough of them yet. If it don't work, use more. There we go. They're breaking it apart pretty good now. We'll send them in. We'll charge off to get some extra little hits in. And we're just about at the end now. So I think I'll do a little bit of the campaign and show off the game a little bit more, how the story was. It is a weird... Uh, I'm trying to think, because it's sci-fi, but it's like steampunk sci-fi sort of story. Congratulations. 
you've successfully completed the tutorial for Impossible Creatures. You now know all that you need to begin your adventure. Farewell, my friend. There we go. And that was basically our little tutorial wrapped up. So I've been the Survival This. Thank you guys for watching this little, I guess, prologue or prelude into what Impossible Creatures will be. I'll see you in the series as it gets uploaded throughout the coming days. So remember to take care and stay alive.